Hey, what's up? Welcome. You are listening to TC the G Radio, Season 3, Episode 5. I am TC the G, broadcasting directly from Tijuana, Baja California. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are going to have a great time. The title of today's episode, Jenny 69. Okay, so Jenny 69. So this is another, this is like the last episode. This is another example of what not to be. Okay, last week it was um, Krishan Rock, and this week Jenny 69. I decided to speak about Jenny 69 because you know she's popular at the at the moment, and she seems to to have pull right with um, with with women, which concerns me. And this is what not to be, especially when you have children, because like I mentioned again last uh, episode. She's pretty much, yes, she does music, but a lot of her lyrics are like, like prostitute kind of, kind of lyrics. And we're going to go over a few lyrics in a little bit. So since her lyrics are like so sexual and like prostitute like, you can pretty much say that she's a sex worker, an adult, that she's an adult industry worker. Just because there's no video, there's no image doesn't mean it's not sec uh, it's not adult work you know it's like it's like music porn instead of being like video porn it's like music porn so the thing about having children and her being like a music adult worker having a parent that does like adult industry work puts the child through a very hard time through a very hard time Especially because you're growing up and what people or being accepted is a big part of growing up healthy and in society, right? You want to be accepted by your peers, by your tribe. So what we want to do is give our children the most normal upbringing there is or, you know, close to the, to the traditional, to the norm. I'm not saying that. Mm, again, that you shouldn't be or you you don't have the right to have the job that you wish to have. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that when you involve children, your image, whether you like it or not, you are the role model of this of this um, of this child, whether you like it or not. I was watching last time no jumper. Uh, he was with one of the podcasters, one of the that Honduran guy that does the podcasts, he was saying that the Honduran guy asked him if he would, uh, if he would like, he would like his daughter to have the same job as him, which he is a porn star. And he responded that, no, I would not like that. I'm a normal person. So, so he himself, he knows what the norm is, right? So that itself tells me that there's something that he even he himself thinks that what he's he's doing there's something not right about it right if he would not like his he says he doesn't want his daughter to have that job why would that be only because he understands that it's something that's not healthy you can say for his children for any children really and what i have noticed is that these celebrities these well-known people they kind of feel like i want i'm, I'm going to do this but I'm going to teach my child not to do that. That's what he was kind of like saying as well. Like, I'm going to give her the speeches, the talks, and for her not to do that kind of thing, right? But in reality, our children learn from our example, not but what we say. And that's, you know, that's, that's pretty much science. You know, like, you're supposed to practice what you preach pretty much. So if he's just preaching without practicing it, then he's just looking like a preacher. And kids catch on to leadership right away. So they'll see through your little facade that you're trying to say something, but in reality, in reality you're doing something else. So, you know, it's it brings them it, you're bringing you're bringing them up. You're you're raising them in a place of dishonesty, in a place where there's no consistency. You're just saying this, but you don't really believe it because you're not even doing it yourself. You're saying this is the right path not to 
do porn, but you don't really believe what you're saying because obviously you're doing it, you know? So kids are smart. They're very in touch with their intuition. And when they feel these things, like, mm, you know, something's off, something's off. And that kind of, I think at the end of the day, that kind of breaks their heart, kids' hearts, because they want a leader. They want to look up to somebody. They, they love that. You know, they, they want to learn from us. And we let them down when, when, we, when we are guiding ourselves in the wrong path because they can see it. And it's like you're dooming them before they even start their, their adult's life. You're like causing trauma to them. You know, maybe it's not like, oh, punishment, like physical, severe, but mentally kids suffer and seeing their parents have that kind of job alienates them it makes them feel like an outsider like they don't belong where they thrive and some people might say oh it's okay you know it's okay to stand out you ha you have to be different yes of course we're all actually we're we are all different there's none of us no, there's no one of us who is exactly like another person Everybody in the whole entire world is a completely different DNA, makeup, completely different plant. We're all different. But going back to wanting to be part of a family, be part of a tribe, that's something that kids need. And for them to grow healthy needs to be fulfilled. And when you put them in this position, being the children of adult industry workers, you're ruining them. You're completely having no regard for this child's future. That's pretty much what you're saying. I don't care about your future. I'm going to do me. You're my child. You belong to me. But what you need in your life doesn't really matter. Only what I want. I want to be this porn star. It doesn't matter how I affect your life. It doesn't matter how others see you. It doesn't matter the trauma it causes you. I don't care because I'm going to do me. That's pretty much what they're saying. When you have children, you have to be a courageous person and understand that you are the role model, whether you like it or not. You are the role model, so you should step your game up. You have to step it up for the children. And if you're not going to step your game up, don't have children. And if you're going to be, a, if you consciously, willingly to be an adult sex worker, an adult industry worker, then just realize that maybe I shouldn't have children because again, you're going to be setting them up for failure. The, the path you have given them being their parent is looking kind of dark. It's not looking too bright for them. So let me go back now to the lyrics of Jenny six, nine. Let me pull them up. I had them here. Okay, so the plug is my trick. Y'all be fucking for a, I don't know what she said, zip or dip? I don't know what she said. But okay, so she's pretty much promoting prostitution in her, in her lyrics, which is a very bad example for our children. If I had a mom that was doing that, I would feel ashamed. And I was actually talking to my having a conversation with my son about this and he said some very interesting things I thought they were kind of funny but it just gives you an insight into a ch uh, young adult's mind you know you don't have to take my word for it you know so let me go ahead and bring my son in he's actually gonna be a special guest and I'm just gonna ask him how how he would feel if he had a mom that dressed like Jenny 6 9 wrapped like Jenny 6 9 the way Jenny 6 9s Instagram looks so let me go ahead and bring him in before anything introduce yourself here's my son his name is Elijah but here you go son introduce yourself my name is Elijah Saul Kailahi I'm 16 years old and I'm on the show yeah okay son so we were talking about Jenny 6 9 mm -hmm. um, I was asking well, I was you know talking about how she has like a sexual image 
How would you feel if you had a mom that came out in videos like that, like music videos? I'd be disappointed to be on. Uh, be disappointed to be honest because that's not the kind of image that I want as a mother figure that uh, exposes herself as a. I don't want to say whore, but like, and in introducing herself as an image of a whore. Okay, so how should your? How do you think a mom should be or look like? A mom should just look regular and like regular mom, just at home cooking dinner, cleaning, going to work también, and that's it. Yeah, that's simple. What do you think about people who are going to say, oh, that's too traditional, or that's that's not real in today's world? Pues, still, it's, um, you can't really change tradition because that's how the way it works, because that's how God intended to have things work. Men work, work, hunt, and women cook and clean, because there's got to be an order and there's got to be um, roles in the way the house works because if there's no order then there's chaos yes uh-huh um i don't like to put too much i like to keep things more like an educational because some people might think oh you're being like a god freak or something mm -hmm. but just overall it's you can't deny that people are gonna see let's say jane six nine as a sexual person yeah so guys are gonna be like lusting after her right yeah so that's like a all that attention is is that was like bad or not bad or uncomfortable or what kind of example would you like as a mom you said stay home but i mean what would, should be her job or if she had a job what would you like your mom to have a, what would a, a, a good respectable job be for a mother a good respectable job would be like mm, anything that's got to like for example like call centers that would be a good uh, job too and if they want to pursue something more more professional like cooking um cooking or any other ones i can't really think of right now but cooking is one of them and call centers something like that because <laughs> it sounds like me but um um i want you to have like your own opinion you know so that's what i'm asking but if you think that's the one okay well that's the one i guess that's the example you've been seeing thank you son anything else you want to say uh, subscribe. That's it. Okay. I get nervous. You were really nervous. I can tell. I stuttered. Okay, guys. So, so my my son said he got a little nervous. So I just wanted him to answer maybe one or two questions. You know, just to to hear their side of the story or you know, young adults' side of the story. There's also another. Um, another video or clip that I found online where she's um, she's trying to give advice to young women about um, being empowered so let me go ahead and play that clip remember how earlier you asked you're like what would you tell a young girl that's yeah. like trying to make it don't let a man control you like oh, yeah. mm -hmm. don't as much as you love a person you have kids with them you have whatever with them don't ever let a man control you or don't love a man more than you love yourself because mm -hmm. the moment you start loving somebody else the more than you love yourself good luck because you're going to be in a depression you're going to be in a toxic relationship value yourself uh respect yourself and give yourself what you want like I know a lot of guys like to say like, oh, well, she's a hoe, da, da, da. like appreciate that people are calling you that because that means that you are just like a mujer empoderada mm -hmm. and you don't give a fuck what guys have to say about you because it's like only you know who you're fucking and who cares? Fuck whoever you want. Like, why is it a bad thing for girls to be like, oh, well, she got mileage on that pussy. Like, nigga, shut the fuck up because you know you would want to fuck me if you had the chance. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that advice was just completely, to me, I was just like, she really thinks she's saying something smart here. But, you know, I appreciate that she's making an effort. She, you know, we appreciate that she's trying to be a good, she thinks she's saying something, uh, I guess, beneficial to young women. But in reality, when you're trying to have a relationship with somebody, it does matter. It does matter your reputation as a woman. If you've been loose like a goose in the streets, it's just not like, um, 
you're not a trophy anymore. And I know we don't want, oh, I'm, I don't want to be a trophy wife. Well, it's not a, it's not in that, in that context. It's more like trophy, like a prize. You're the, yeah, you're the prize, you know, you're the reward of them being a good person. A good woman is the reward. And if you, if you want to find a righteous man, you have to be a righteous woman. There's no other way around it. If you want healthy love, you have to be a righteous woman if, so you can attract a righteous man. Healthy love can only, can only, only exist with a righteous couple. Everything else, if, if you're trying to have a relationship without keeping righteousness in the equation, it's going to be a, a relationship that's mediocre. I myself, I cannot settle for mediocre. I got to feel like we're growing, we're loving each other, it's real. We make mistakes, we fix them. Some people are okay having an attitude with their husbands. And it's fine, you know, that's what they like, okay. But to me, I have like high standards when it comes to love. I cannot be bickering my, my, with my husband. I cannot be disagreeing with him all the time. We cannot be fighting. We cannot be being like ignoring each other and attacking each other. Things like that. It's just like you're not you're not a team. You're just dealing with each other. You're not really loving each other. You're just dealing with each other. I want a best friend. You know, somebody that's a really a really my my best friend best friend. I want a real loving relationship, not just just to have somebody there, just so you're not alone, you know? That's just like settling, and I, I, I myself, I cannot do that. So if I don't mean to offend anybody who's happy with that, but me as a person that wants the best in life, I also want the best in a partner. I want to be the best. Per I want to be a best uh, partner as well, or like a good partner as well. I want the best and be the best for somebody. And it's hard work. It's hard work to have a relationship like that. More than anything, it's hard work within yourself. You have to be doing all that work, and you have to be. You have to do the work to even be able to recognize a person like a righteous man. Sometimes when when the when you know that one person is not conscious enough, not righteous enough, they'll they'll mess up with this person, right? They'll fuck it up somehow. And you know, it it happens. We have to learn sometimes from experience a lot of the times. Hopefully losing somebody you really love and and that you see then the and that you end up reflecting back on and see that they were a good person. Hopefully that helps you motivate yourself to be a better person. Maybe you'll be ready for the next one. So back to Jenny69. I went to her Instagram this morning and I saw that she had a, a video, like a reel, where she's, she's at the store with her husband and her son. And they're like dancing to music. But then she turns, they're like, you know, dancing regular, fancy in the front, facing the camera. And then all of a sudden, she turns around and starts shaking her ass with her son right there next to her. And a lot of people didn't disappoint because they were leaving like comments were like comments that were like, wow, you know, wrong time or inappropriate. And it's completely inappropriate. And it got me thinking like, dang, people are telling her it's inappropriate. Why doesn't she take it down? Why doesn't she take it down? It's like she'll rather get the views, the likes, even if it's negative attention or or the people co commenting you know like you're inappropriate she'll rather keep that up I'm guessing for the numbers for the controversy I guess than really worrying about you know being a good woman so her priority or a good mother her priority in her mind is the numbers is the numbers and I'm thinking maybe she's thinking fuck it I already fucked up let me bank on it but I mean, it just seems like you should, if any, my motivation is being a good, good role model to the children. So 
maybe that's where she maybe her motivation is not that her motivation is the numbers i would instantly try to retract it or do like an apology or something of that sort because i know that what for example her she's in that position what i do matters right what she does matters people care follow her and I know we can't control everything and everybody in the world. There's always going to be people like this in the world. It's just a matter of getting us on the same page about children and that we need to protect them and do the best for them because they are the future. If we want to keep our legacy, we need to take care of the children. Nowadays, it's like a lot of these celebrities would rather bank than really take care of their children. It's like, they don't they're not looking forward to life if anything it's like they worship death they do things that are not healthy for human beings like this psychological trauma that she's going to cause her child because she decides to go online half naked shake her butt and talk about being a prostitute or rap about being a prostitute some kids maybe grow up too involved in that in that environment that they see that as the norm but once they encounter regular people they're going to see the difference and they're not going to be adjusted for that they're going to have a hard time and life is not easy right life is hard but as parents we should try to make our children's life, at, at least when they're young, as easy, as stress-free as possible. Not easy, stress-free as possible. Because being judged as a child, oh, your mom is a, is a prostitute, your mom is this, it causes stress. You're stressed out. You don't fit in with your, with your, with your tribe, with your friends. It alienates you. And... Not to mention that it even puts, you know, be, being a prostitute, my mom put us through a lot of abuse, sexual abuse. Um, it's like she didn't really care. She tried to pimp us. And was she, I don't know if she was getting money, but she did. She did do it for a little bit. And you as a child, to me there was no perf, uh, penetration, but there was other things that happened to me, like touching me and rubbing me and things like that and to me that that's something that it's very cruel it's a, it's a crime right and my mother put put us me and my and my brother through that my brother and I through that my sister luckily she her dad took her away he knew what was better for her so he took her away from my mom and, you know, maybe I wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't go through that. But that's something that I don't want to keep living or see kids live. So it made me, it gave me like a, I guess you can say a passion for children to speak up for children. Because when I was going through that, it's hard to speak up. You're a child. You don't know. You don't know. You know, you just don't know what to do unless your parents taught you. But your parent, my mom was not teaching me that. She was teaching me that the other thing was the thing that was right. The bad thing was right. And you want to have your parents' approval and acceptance. So it's a very mind-fucked kind of place to be in. So I understand and I, and I empathize with a lot of these children. And I, was, I went to, I went on an interview this last Saturday. And I was talking to the host. His name is Gerardo. We were t I was talking to the host in his show. Uh, his show's name is Programa Especial. So Islas and I, we were there. We were interviewed about just what, what, what has been up because we used to have a podcast at that station with him. Uh, it's like an online TV station. It's called GTV. So he was saying about, I mentioned to him, I was like, what about children that have to stay home like single mothers, right? They have to go to work the majority of the day, just like I was when I had my son. What if they're like working the majority of the day and the kid is at home unsupervised and he's watching 
whatever he's watching on TV. And let's say a commercial comes up of these people, half naked and things like that. Or a show comes up with them doing sexual stuff. There should be like a time limit or like a time slot where they, they can be seen, you know, like maybe like late night. Middle of the day would not be the appropriate time, right? And he said, yeah, you're right, but, you know, we're not in the position to be teaching to be the, the educators of children. That's not like, that's not, that's not my job kind of thing. You know, that's, that's a parent's job. He's like, and, and I told him the example about, you know, the single mo mother. And he was like, well, that's only like a special case. But now when I, I started thinking, I was like, I kind of, you know, I let him say what he had to say. And when I was reflecting on that conversation, I started thinking, actually, it's not just one case. It's the majority of the cases. A lot of women are single mothers or a lot of the families nowadays, there's no two parents. And if there is two parents in the home, usually they're both working as well. So that's why it's so important to have specific time slots for these, uh, for these shows. So they're not shown during time when, you know, children are awake. So it is very important to, to keep in mind who we are putting in our TVs, what shows are being shown in our, shown in our TVs, because a lot of these children or even online or, you know, these, a lot of these children are being raised, <laughs> unfortunately, and it sucks to have to see it happen, but a lot of them are on the TV iPads, tablets, and we have to make sure to be a good example for them. They deserve it. They're the future. Thank you so much for tuning in to TCDG Radio. I hope you enjoyed this episode. What are your thoughts on today's topic of conversation, Jenny69? Let me know. Comment, like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay in the loop. Remember to tune in to TCDG Radio Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also connect with me on social media to get more of me and my music. My social media and contact information are on the video's description. Again, thank you to each and every one of you for tuning in and for allowing me to share this time with you. Take care. Saludos.